that one too. Yo, before I get started, man, I gotta, I gotta bring out somebody, man, that's real important to me. Hey, Grandmaster Flash, Grand Wizard Dildo was one of the, two of them, like one of the big, the, both of them were the biggest influences in my life. But this brother right here was the guy I got my whole style from. His name is Grand Wizard Rajin from Philly, y'all. Please give him a hand, man. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for him, there would be no DJ Jazzy Jeff, no Cash Money, none of us, man. This man was is a pioneer in Philly. And I had to bring him up. I used to dance. I was in a dance group called the Franchise Dancers, and what that was was a combination of uh, uh, break dancing and um, say um, Fred Astaire stepping. And it was like, like that, that was the combination. So we would do a lot of uh, like floor action and stuff like that. So there was a guy in our group named uh, Grand Wizard Rasheen who was a DJ. He played the music for us to, to step to. So I always wanted to be him. Um, you also created, of course, the, the DJ battle style. Yeah, yes. Um, when I was at the um, radio station that I had called WSOT, so I was Philly. When I first got my first turntables was um black BSRs. Yeah. You know, one mine bought them for me and um I had a dresser in my room and it, the dresser was kind of small. And you know, when I first got my tables I couldn't fit them the right way because they were too long, and, you know, they would hang off the edge. Yeah. So what I did, I turned them sideways and put my mixer in the middle and, and it fitted perfectly. And then I just started mixing and doing tricks like that. That's how that came about. <laughs> so it was that's actually called. a necessity. Yes. That's how it came about. Cool. I mean, so it wasn't no, I wasn't thinking about doing it. It's just I had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> because, but that, you know, set the scene for, you know, eons to come because everyone uses that setup now. Yeah. Yeah, well, hey, that's good. And what I found out is that, you know, for me dancing, too, mm -hmm. I, what I did, I, I added my dance tricks to my DJ D tricks. To your DJing, yeah. And plus, yeah, and plus I rap, too. So I did all three of them at the same time. And, you know, when I did a show, I just kind of blew people out. So what it is, everybody wanted to learn how to, you know, do what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Um. It's another secret that people don't know. Will Smith was in my group too. Yeah, so, I can imagine because got, yeah, because not only Cash Money was one of your proteges, uh, DJ Jesse yeah. Jeff was one of your proteges as well. Yes, yes. How, how did how did you meet those guys? Who Cash? Well, you know, Cash, Cash was like Cash, of course, was a dancer in your yeah, crew. So you know what it was after practice, dance practice. One day he was like, "Well, I seen him." Um, can you teach me how to do that, you know, that scratching stuff that you're doing? And I'm like, all right, yeah. So I start teaching them every night, every, you know, after a uh, dance rehearsal. So for like a couple of years, I taught him. And then, you know, once he got it good, he used to go, he used to ride his bike from my house to go to Jazzy Jeff's house. Mm -hmm. Right? Because Jeff didn't live too far away. So he wanted to show, you know, off the tricks that I showed him. Yeah. So he'd go over Jeff, because Jeff had 1,200s at the time. Ooh. And, you know, the I mean, 12s just came out. He wanted to show Jeff. So he'd go over Jeff's house and show Jeff, you know, the tricks that, you know, that I would show him. And then they hooked up a routine that me and Cass did called the Twins of Spin. Mm -hmm. I made that routine up for me and Cass to do our shows. So Cass showed Jazzy Jeff. And now, when it first came out, I don't know if y'all ever heard of it, but it was called the Toys of Spain. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so they went out doing shows with the Twins of Spain. Well, I basically stayed on the radio station, you know, doing my um, hip-hop shows. Mm-hmm. And, um, like I said, I basically, I basically showed them, like, everything. I showed them how to stand. I showed them how to bring the peeps in. I showed them what breaks was, how to... Big count. Mm -hmm. You know, I showed him everything about that I thought, you know, that was important about DJing. Yeah, the, all the things that he needed to know. And, you know, judging by the success that uh, Cash Money and Marvelous had, as well as DJ Jesse Jeff and Will Smith, then mm -hmm. you taught him right. Yeah. 
Definitely, definitely. <laughs> now, not only did you invent, you know, the way to put your turntables to have the most effect and, you know, out of necessity, but still, uh, you also invented a lot of different cuts. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, one of the words is that as far as, like, the naming you know, of the different cuts, I was never a guy, a guy that would name my cuts because I had so many. I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person, I'll make it up right there. I'm not going to... Uh, most people will practice that cut for, like, a, a month or two. Me, I just get on turntables and whatever comes to my mind at that time. You just I'm did doing it. doing it. Wow. Yeah, so I don't, I don't try to recall that cut. So that was Cash and Jeff used to do that. They named basically all my cuts. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They put names to them. I know what cut you do, but I didn't give it that name. You gave it that name, and and you know what I mean? It made it popular. It made the name popular. Yeah. But, you know, you know, it's not cut, but it's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the name is, is yours, I guess. So, yeah, that's what you know. Like, I'm, you know, like, so the Transformers. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see, vibrators, beat jugglers, and different stuff like that. I would, I wouldn't call them that. I was, yeah, I you, really wouldn't call them nothing. I was just doing it. You were just doing them, and they named them. Well, yeah. anyway, we're yeah. very happy that they came to pass, because otherwise yeah. the cuts wouldn't exist. All you cats out there, man, y'all really need to start speaking up, man. And stop letting our history be all over the place. Let's stay consistent, man. You know, we put in a lot of work, a lot of sweat, man. There's a lot of unsung heroes that's not getting their their, their props, too. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely speaking about that. So I'm representing all that, man. So. I have a question. Do you think yeah. Jeff um, didn't speak up on purpose? Or do you just think it just slipped his mind and just didn't care? Jeff don't speak up for shit. And they'll, they're, you know, this ain't me throwing a shot at the, at this cat, man. You know what I'm saying? But it's the truth is the truth, man. You got to speak up, man. You know, nobody cares about... I mean, we're all proud of all the success and everything him and Will had. I mean, shoot, we it's a whole lot of us that are successful. You know, Quest, I'm happy for your success. I mean, all of us are doing our thing. But when it comes down to history, man, you got to speak up. You just can't just let somebody just go ahead and just write any kind of story and you just don't say nothing. That's, just, that, that's like you just okay in it. You know, I mean, it's a whole lot of brothers out here, man, that does not that do not get their props here, man, and that's what I'm here to represent. I guess um, I only have a few more. Mm -hmm. One of my final questions is, I mean, like uh, at the the DJ day and over time, there have been a lot of rivalries uh, in the Philadelphia area. Now, is it true years ago that you and Jazzy Jeff were actually partners and DJ together? Yeah, we uh, had this thing. Uh, we were called the Twins of Spin. Actually, see, I'm giving. I'm gonna give you a little bit of history because this will be on my DVD. Grand Wizard Rasheen and myself used to do a routine, okay, and I brought it to Jeff's attention, and that's how we became the Twins of Spin. But pretty much, man, Jeff has been taking. I I I, I would say he's been inspired by me. For a lot of things and on my DVD you know I have all the footage man mm -hmm. I have footage I have flyers I have everything to back up everything that I'm saying you know and um you, you know dog we over we're over 40 now man you can't take it to the grave man you gotta you gotta come clean dog come on man come clean with it you know what I'm saying <laughs> That's all I'm saying, baby. You know, don't take it to the grave with you, man. Cats is dropping like flies, man, today, man. And, yo, you know, we got to tell the truth, man. It ain't nobody throwing a shot at, at, at you, man. But, you know, me and you have definitely had a bitter rivalry because it's not really been even a rivalry. It's been about the lack of respect and acknowledgement that you just have not been given. So I know what I'm going to say is probably going to shock people and probably, I don't know how you might take it, but honestly, I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's my truth, you know? Um, 
you know, me and Jazzy Jeff, we came up together and Jeff learned a lot of stuff from me. But the thing that I have a problem with him is because he doesn't tell where he's gotten things from and who influenced him. Mm. That has been my only problem. He is a phenomenal guy and my brother. And this is not to knock him in no type of way, but hey, I'm here. You know, Jeff basically got out before me with my style and it always looked like I was over, I was over always overshadowed by him. So my fight has been much harder and greater than his. You know, and it's not, to, it's, there's no comparison, no competition. I just want what I created, even like with the Transformers scratch. And uh, all these things, everybody, I never have nothing for my own. You know, it's always I have to share it with somebody. You know, you didn't create the Transformers scratch. I did. This style of turntables, you know, when I first started out, they were like this. Okay. Yeah. They were like that. Yeah, turntables before 1986, or yeah, at least for me, from, from my prism, watching DJs like Jazzy Jeff, Cash Money, Graphics or DST, if you looked at the, actually, hold on for a second, guys, let's just, let's just really break down what Cash is talking about. <laughs> So, as you guys can see here, the turntable, the tone arm, is on the right side of the turntable. That's the traditional way DJs like my dad, my brother, Grandmaster Flash, Grounds and Theodore, in this case, these are the hands of Grandmix or DST, would set up their turntables. Here's the thing, the tone arm is on the right side, so you would set we call it just straight up, right? You set your turntable straight up with the tone arm on the right side. So the tone, the tone arm of the left turntable will be straight up on the right side. So when your left hand is moving to the left deck to do a backspin, there will be times where you would accidentally hit the tone arm and then the needle would fly off the record. So to avoid that from happening, DJs let me just find something with you cash. So you can see here, yeah, this is perfect. See here, now the tone arm is, uh, let's just say at the top of the turntables. So whether you're moving right or left, the tone arm is out of the way. So it, it frees up space. And we term that Philly style because at the time, me being from New York, I had no idea that Cash Money and, and Grand Wizard Rasheen were the first ones to, to think I need to turn them out of my way so I'm going to position the turntables the long way so that the tone arm's at the top. Now that we know this, a lot of DJs set up the turntables that way. When you guys first got to class, the, the turntables were already quote unquote Philly style, but you didn't know why. It's because of DJs like Cash Money and Brown Wizard Rashid. You know what though? I don't even like the term Philly style. I want to stop even using that because Philly style, well, all Philly DJs had both turntables on the left. Style. Yeah, true. That was Philly style. When I came, when I tell you nobody was doing this at all this way, I mean that. Look, you guys don't even know what I've been through. When I played Latin quarters for the very first time up here, I got booed because they thought I was whack because of the way I set my turntables up. And now everyone sets them up that way. Well, they, they became a fan after I got on. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I'm just saying, it was, uh, I was doing something that was trailblazing and I didn't even know I was doing it. You know, this was just comfortable for me. I never knew that it would be, you know, the, the, the turntable companies make them like that. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. I wish I had that patent. Yeah. Um, if you could talk about your relationship with uh, Grand Wizard Rasheen and how that influenced you in your creativity and your authenticity and what are the, the guidelines, which is the way that he guided you because obviously he wasn't just like telling you what to do step by step. Right. He, um, well first of all, it's very important to know where you come from and it's very important like to be honestly, no one would even be 
even bringing Rashid's name up if it wasn't for me giving back because that's very important. I, I never forget where I come from. Um, he told me to always try to be different than everybody else. That's when I started doing body tricks and things of that nature. Um, things that I did for myself that made my, made my set comfortable, like turning the turntables with the tone arm at the top. That was my creation. You know, I didn't, I didn't do it with the intent that it was gonna be this big marketing thing for the companies. You know, it was just what was comfortable for me. But now, all of a sudden, people have robbed me. They've robbed Cash of that title, you know, saying it's battle style. Fuck that battle style shit, man. That's cash money style. These companies need to stop doing that, man. You keep robbing people. If you're gonna do the shit, give the respect due, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got to say, man, about that. Tell me a couple people that maybe you were looking at that were your OGs that, that you, you know, it convinced you to start DJing. I mean, from here in Philly, man, uh, definitely, uh, Grandmaster Stanell. Uh, 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 Taz McKev, and um, also um, uh, Lightning Rich. Okay, okay. And now what about, we have a little video that we pulled real quickly. Uh, DZ, DZ, can you throw to this video of Grand, Mast, I mean, uh, Grand Wizard Rasheen real quickly? Do you have that video? Uh, Grand Wizard Rasheen. All right. Check this video out real quick. get started, man. I gotta, I gotta bring out somebody, man, that's real important to me. Hey, Grandmaster Flash, Grand Wizard Dildo was one of the, the two of them, like one of the big, the, both of them were the biggest influences in my life. But this brother right here was the guy I got my whole style from. His name is Grand Wizard Rasheen from Philly, y'all. Please give my hand, man. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for him, there would be no DJ Jazzy Jeff, no Cash Money, none of us, man. This man was a, is a pioneer in Philly. And I had to bring him up. So There we are. That was a great video of uh, Cash Money, you know, giving a nice salute there to uh, Grand Wizard Rasheen. Do we still have uh, Cash Money on the line, DZ? Okay, can we can we see him on the screen, DZ? Okay, so uh, tell me a little bit about getting your style from Grand Wizard Rasheen, and how did you even meet him, and what was the scene like in Philly when you just started DJing? Well, I happen to be in a dance group, man. Uh, we're, we're losing your audio there, Cash Money. Um, uh, I'm not sure if he's maybe a little too far from his mic. Uh, no. Well, Rasheen was a, was a DJ for our, our, uh, our dance group that I was in. And he would play all the music for us to dance to. Um, he basically showed me how to mix from turntable to turntable, pretty much. And from that point on, I created my own style, you know, after I learned what he was showing me. So, um, um, yeah, Flash was the fastest DJ that I ever heard at the time until, until I saw Rasheed. <laughs> You know, Rush. So you're saying and Rasheen, Grand Wizard Rasheen was even faster than Flash? Yeah, yeah. Rasheen was doing stuff uh, to like the tenth power of what Flash was doing. You know, and he lived around the corner from me. So, so tell me uh, about this dance troupe. How, how, what what yeah. made you want to be a dancer? I mean, a lot of people that became MCs or DJs, you know, got their start in different ways. What was, we always ask kind of like all of our legendary inductees, what was the very first song or experience you had with hip-hop that made you fall in love with it, if you can recall? Oh, man. Well, the first of all, the DJs would be playing like James Brown breaks at the, um, at the park dance or, or block party. And there would be a circle 
of guys that would be dancing, like battling against one another. And the top group at that time was called the Franchise Dancers, which Rasheen was part of the group. And they just so happened to all live around my neighborhood. So, you know, I didn't grow. I didn't start getting, um, like, growing until I got to, like, my, my later years. Because, I, you know, I, I remained kind of short. And uh, I was, like, the... Uh, the, uh, the surprise, like, everybody thought I was a little kid when I came out there. So, uh, yeah, I was like the surprise of our group, man, when we was battling. Make some noise for Grand Wizard Rasheen right about now. Now, y'all, you know, a lot of times, you know, you like, you don't know who people are. You never seen them, you never heard of, you know, but a lot of people are very influential in people's lives. And, and you might know the person that they influence, but you don't know the influence themselves. My man Rasheen is the influence, okay? My man Cash Money, that's where he, that's where he learned everything from, all right? He's like his uh, mentor, exactly. Thank you, thank you.